guys, it's me. I'm Jody, and I'm doing my educational giant report on Noah Webster. Um, just some quick background information on Noah. He was born in 1758, and he was born to John and Mercy Webster. Um, and they lived in West Hartford, Connecticut. Noah's father was a farmer, and even though he was a farmer, he was still a super intellectual man. He very highly prized education and intelligent people and his mother was like that too she would spend hours a day hours and hours a day with the children teaching them mathematics and spelling and music um, when Webster finally turned six he was able to go to school and he went to the Ecclesi ecclesiastical school that was there in West Hartford and um, it had about 70 kids in it, um, and these kids were obviously it was back then in the day, so it was always it was ranging from any from all ages and all educational backgrounds, and it was just one room falling running down <laughs> little building. Um, and when he talks about his earlier education, he always talks about how they didn't really teach, you know, English they didn't teach the arithmetic. arithmetic. It was all religion and religious doctrine and he that was one of the main reasons he wanted to reform the way Americans thought was he didn't want the religion in there he thought it should be purely secular and that they should be learning reading writing and arithmetic and that they should take out this religious aspect ironically though he was a very religious man and when he was 14 um, he went to study Latin and Greek with his local pastors um, he did this so he could get into Yale, which he eventually did get into Yale. He got in just before his 16th birthday, and he studied there. Um, this was also why the Revolutionary War was going on. So while he was studying there, there was lots of food, shortage, food shortages and um, things like that. So he had to have a lot of different classes in other towns. Um, he was actually part of the militia, too. Anyway, uh, after he graduated... He had a very liberal education and said it didn't do well for a businessman to have a, li a liberal education, but he wasn't quite sure what else to do. So he went back to school, back to Yale to become a lawyer. And while he was studying to become a lawyer, he was working. And I don't know if you guys work and are going to school, but I've tried working and going to school, and it's not easy. It's really not. So he was having a really hard time and eventually just kind of gave up that whole pursuit after about two years of trying to work and trying to go to school because it was just really hard. Um, plus his school jobs just like weren't working out. Um, as, after he finished his degree though, he did go back to teaching and he got like this really successful private school going. But it only ran for about two years, I think. It was one to two years. And then he shut it down. Fun fact, some people say he shut it down due to a secret romance. Ooh, la, la. So he shut that down, and shortly after that, he um, published his Blueback Speller. The Blueback Speller is kind of what he's most, f one of the things he's most famous for. Um, it was used for around 100 years. It greatly impacted the American education system. Um, it, it wasn't just a speller, though. Like That's what we all think of. But there was actually three books. There was the speller, the reader, and the grammar. Well, a reader and a grammar, I say that. And, um... They're like step-by-step -step books, like one, two, three books. Like, you have to read through this one to you know this one, and you have to read this one to know that one. And um, they're kind of revolutionary concept. At the time, people would just try and teach people how to read. They would just be like, oh, no, you need to learn to read. You need to be able to do this. And these kids are like three, four, and they don't know how to do that. And he came up with the concept that, you know, we need to start out with the alphabet and then teach them that they're vowels and consonants. And then um, putting together the sounds and turning those sounds into words and then turning those words into sentences. So he very much built upon himself and had that idea going. And so that actually worked out really well. Um, in 1806 is when he published his first dictionary. And this dictionary is not the one we usually think of. Um, his first edition only sold 2,500 copies and it just didn't provide, him for a, li provide a living for him or anything like that so he spent the next 26 years working on his second edition 
Um, during that time, he learned how to speak 28 different languages because he wanted to work on the autonomy of the dictionary and get all those things figured out. And, you know, he added in so many more words. There was a total of 70,000 words in this second edition. And um, 12,000 of them had never been published in a dictionary before. So he was, he was really cool like that. <laughs> or at least I think that's really cool. He um, actually finished it just days before he died. He died May 28th in 1843. So he didn't really get to see, you know, the consequences of his work. And at the time, people thought his writing was very vulgar because there was you know, these words people had never thought of. And he didn't put religion in there. Like, he obviously had the word religion. But there was no religion to his works. So they just weren't in there. Um... He had a huge impact on society, though. Emily Dickinson had his dictionary, and she was like, this is my best friend. And she wouldn't just, you know, browse through looking for new words for her poems. She would read it like it was the Holy Grail, and it has greatly impacted society. And a lot of those words, he actually changed the spelling of. He made it more phonetic, so it was easier. Um, phonetic, in case you don't know, means um, it's spelled how it sounds. Like, French is not phonetic. Not phonetic. German is phonetic. Anyway, that was a little off topic. But yeah, so he, he changed that up and he made it easier for us. And he taught us how to teach kids and how to teach them better. Um, teach them the right, teach them in a way they understand. Uh, so that's Noah Webster. Uh, once again, he is famous for his blueback speller and his second edition of his, the second edition of his dictionary. I hope you guys enjoyed my video presentation and have a wonderful night.